But first, let's speak to the senior football writer at ESPN, James Ollie joins us. James, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, guys. Um, listen, this news is just absolutely massive on so many levels. Um, how damning potentially could this be to Chelsea Football Club, do you think? Um, yeah, very. Um, in terms of the day-to-day running of the club, um, although they've got a licence to continue as normal, whatever the new normal is, I- I've just been looking at the, the sort of the figures... And their year-end accounts from last year showed that they actually only have a cash balance of about £17 million, which is a lot less than the sort of other comparable clubs in the Premier League. And £17 million, although they can still generate some income, so they'll still get their money from the broadcast revenue, they'll still get money from the existing sponsorship deals, assuming that they continue. But, but that £17 million does not really get you very far. And if you start thinking about you know the summer when they've got players like Rudiger, Christensen... Uh, out of contract they're not able to renegotiate those deals Um, and I actually asked Thomas Tuchel about that yesterday and and I think there was quite a lot of uncertainty before this announcement as to whether they could even you know sign players to new contracts when they didn't know who the owner was going to be you know ultimately the guy who's going to sign that off right is going to be the owner of the club and if you don't know who the owner is going to be how can they commit what are you know multi-million pound contracts on new players so I think in terms of the, the sort of medium to longer term decision making in terms of the squad and transfers obviously there's effectively a transfer embargo at the moment on the club they can't sign new players they can't sell any players um it's it's going to cause them some major problems i mean there's not it's not as if they're going to be wound up with immediate effect or anything like that there's enough cash there to get keep them going you think they'll sort of muddle their way through to the end of the season or a sale being completed whichever comes first But there are going to be some difficult decisions to make. And I do think for those three players, Christensen, Rudiger and Azpilicueta, whose contracts are running out, they've got to be looking at the situation now thinking, well, you know, we're just going to get more security, more clarity elsewhere. And for starters, Chelsea could be losing three key players Mm. uh, in their squad. James, I'm going to, we're going to ask you some questions. I don't know if you know the answer. I don't know if anyone knows the answer, but I'll ask them anyway. You mentioned, of course, they're not going to get wound up with immediate effect. Um, are Chelsea as a club getting um, special dispensation because of the fact it's a football club? So th- th- if you spun it around, if it was a normal business that Abramovich owned, would they shut that down instantly, irrelevant of how many people that business employs? Or is it just so- because it's Chelsea that they're being allowed to carry on? It would it would depend on the nature of the business. So Abramovich has got other business interests that um, are, let's say, let more aligned to the reasons why he's been sanctioned than Chelsea. Chelsea are quite obviously a, their primary function is a football club. Mm. They are nothing to do, you know, in terms of their entity and what they stand for and what they do and what they day to day function as. They are nothing to do with the Russian state. They are clearly nothing to do with Vladimir Putin in terms of how they want to operate and what they exist for, what their purpose is. Mm -hmm. So they've been granted by the UK government a special licence, which effectively means that they can operate and continue to exist because they are not seen as a direct mechanism through which Abramovich is exerting this alleged influence and alignment with the Russian state. So that's why they've been given their special dispensation. But no, it wouldn't apply to every business that Abramovich has. And it wouldn't, for example, apply to his property, you know, because obviously his property, that that is to house the person who is being sanctioned, whereas they're looking at Chelsea as a separate entity. Therefore, they've been granted this licence. I want to ask you about Stamford Bridge and and the away fan situation, because we know that I think it's only season ticket holders that are allowed to go and watch games now at Stamford Bridge. You can't buy a new ticket. But what about the away fan situation? So anyone who's bought a ticket for... a, a So they're at home, I think, to Newcastle, aren't they, this weekend? So I think the Newcastle fans, they should be OK because that game, you know, those ticket sales will have already taken place prior to Thursday. So essentially the cutoff is from the moment that those sanctions were announced, which is obviously Thursday morning, this morning the club cannot generate any new income because technically that could find its way back to Abramovich and therefore he's not being sanctioned and that asset is not being frozen as a personal benefit to him. So anything beyond that, away fans will not be able to buy tickets. That will also apply to Chelsea fans who want to go and buy tickets for away games because that would be a fresh transaction. So, for example, my understanding is they're not able to buy tickets for the Middlesbrough uh, FA Cup away game on Saturday week and that will continue 
But also significantly, this will affect the home fans because if Chelsea get through in the Champions League, mm. my understanding is that the Champions League Cup matches are not included as part of the season tickets. So let's say Chelsea get a quarter final, they may well be playing that game and probably will be playing that game behind closed doors at Stamford Bridge. Wow. Uh, James Olley, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for coming on. Pleasure. There you go, James Olley, the senior football writer at ESPN. Let's find out what ex players make of it. The fun boy Jason Cundy joins us now. Cundy, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh- Afternoon, boys. Listen, no one really knows too much about actually what's going on inside the club. I don't know if you do or not, but before we get into that, first, how are you feeling? Chelsea, your club, I know you work for them as well for Chelsea TV. You've grown up man and boy, you've supported them through thick and thin. How are you feeling today on the back of this news? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a very strange day, mate. Um, I, I woke up uh, to the news um, and, of course, then you start to realise the gravity of the situation and what sanctions actually mean. Like, we... People have spoken about sanctions, but I don't think anyone's really understood or knew what that truly meant until today. And it's brutal. It's it's truly been brutal to the club, and you just heard James Orley explain it very well there. Um, as me as a fan and an ex-player and a, you know somebody who supported the club for as long as I can remember, um, it's a, it's a it's a worrying time. You know, you, you, the, the club I supported, you start to fear long-term, medium, and, and it's certainly the short-term future of the, uh, of the club. I, I just heard Simon Jordan there talking about the sale of the club. That, that to me, is going to be absolutely key. The sale of the club, moving the club forward, ensuring that Roman does not get any of the proceeds of the sale. I think if that happens, I think a lot of this will disappear. But, of course, that, there's a lot to happen between now and then. And, and of course, you know, while that, that question remains unanswered, there is so much conjecture, so much speculation about what's going to happen to the club. Uh, James talking about the players are out of contract, about new players joining, about selling tickets, no revenue coming into the club at the moment. The, the, the short-term future right now, there is a, there's a big concern as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, and you touching it there, uh, Jace, about the, the players out of contract, the likes of Rudiger, um, one of your best players, turned into one of the best defenders in the Premier League, uh, Christensen, um, your captains, Dave. I mean, the, the, the list's endless. I mean, what does that mean for the kind of on the pitch for Chelsea Football Club going forward? Christensen, I think, was always going to leave. Um, I think he's going to Barca. I'm not convinced that Tony would have signed a new deal. Um, even though, you're right, he's been magnificent for us. Um, and that's that's going to be a big hole um, to fill. Aspie, uh, apparently, there was a, 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 the club could have... Um, there's a year extension the club could have triggered and haven't. So... Right now, those three players, I think, I felt, were always going to leave. But that doesn't change the future, of course, about mm. bringing new players in to replace them. I, I kind of feel, and I, this is, maybe this is me being slightly naive, it could, things could change. I wouldn't surprise me if the next six weeks the club is sold. But if that's the case, things can still change very, very quickly. Mm. Let, me ask you, let me ask you then on the flip side of that, Jay. If it's not... And there's yeah. still uncertainty at the club. Do you worry about the future of not necessarily players, but even your manager? Um, I think I think you've got to, you've got to be worried about the future of, of everyone at the club. You know, and, the, and I'm just talking about the manager. I'm talking about the thousands of people that, that, that work there. There's going to be a lot of people really concerned about their own personal future and their families, of course. You know about what that means for them. So I think that while there's so much uncertainty, I think you have to really be concerned about where this leaves manager, players, staff and everyone connected with the football club. Mm. I, I don't think Roman, it, just looking at it from, from and I am the outside, I'm, 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 not, I'm not contracted to Chelsea, I'm, I'm freelance. I, don't, I work for Chelsea, but I'm not staff. I, I can't help but think that right, there's very few avenues left for Roman, unless he was to kind of walk away. Mm. And that's just from, the, just from the, the limited information I've been trying to, no, it's only happened a couple of hours ago. I think if that was to happen and, and then the government was to oversee a sale, which there are plenty of potential buyers waiting, I just hope that this is done quickly and as smoothly as possible okay. because the longer it goes on, you, you fear, of course, for the, the longer medium uh, future of the club. 